Welcome back to the channel. Old compressors are relatively cheap, but vacuum pumps are very expensive. So what we're going to do today is take this old air compressor and turn it into a vacuum pump using the tools I have in my garage. <laughs> Looking at prices of vacuum pumps online, the really crappy ones start at about $100, and very quickly those prices will climb to or very much exceed a $500 price point. And meanwhile, this functioning 3-gallon Makita air compressor was a $25 find on Facebook Marketplace. But it's also old, head-splittingly loud, and struggles to keep up with my current projects, so before you sharpen those pitchforks, you should be aware that I have already replaced this with a much quieter 30-gallon compressor. That means we have 70 $5 we can spend to convert this to a vacuum pump before it becomes economically more feasible to just buy the cheapest version. And let me just answer your biggest question right now of why is this even possible? Compressors and vacuum pumps are both generating a pressure difference to move air from one area to another. The compressor draws in air from your environment and then forces that air out into a holding tank at the higher pressure, whereas the vacuum pump strains on the inlet side to pull out air where there's not really a whole lot there, and then pushes it out to the environment around you at atmospheric pressure. So really all we're going to do is modify the inlet and the exhaust of this compressor. We are going to disconnect the exhaust from the tank below so that it goes to atmosphere. And on the intake side of this pump, we are going to add a single inlet that's going to be sucking in all of the air. And finally, we're going to have to plug up any other holes that air might currently be able to get through. The exhaust side is extremely easy to find. It's probably the only little piece of pipe that goes down into the tank below. And the inlet is probably within this graded open section here, but we need to open up this plastic housing to really get to it. I started by removing every screw that was externally accessible, began prying the two halves of this plastic body apart, and persuaded the rest of the removal using a rubber mallet. So let's take a quick look at the anatomy of this pump, and if you don't need this information, feel free to skip forward. You can see here on the back there's a little external fan that is attached to an electric motor. So basically when that kicks on, the motor spins with that fan attached, the fan keeps it cool so your pump doesn't overheat, and on the other side of this motor is a drive wheel that has a rubber belt on it. This belt is effectively hooked up to a mini crankshaft, that's where your piston is right here, and that piston is what compresses the air up and through this tube and then down into the tank below. But the air that's eventually forced into that tank doesn't magically come from nowhere, it has to be drawn in from the environment somewhere around the top of that piston. So if you look at this housing towards the head of the piston, you'll see this little slit here and there's another one on the back side. Those are the only two openings that I could find that would allow air to go into this cylinder. But as in all projects, being pretty sure is not 100% sure, and the easiest way to figure this out is for me to take off that cover because there are a couple bolts exposed on that face, and once we can see the inside, it'll be very easy to see if there's any other holes because we will have to plug those up. And with the removal of just a few bolts, that entire cylinder head came off, and with it came the walls of the cylinder itself. There was also a gasket in between the two to help maintain that air seal. Be careful that you don't tear that, especially if you're going to try to reuse it later. But let's split this open real quick and give you a good idea of what we're looking at here. This is how this was oriented oriented on the part. When you split it open, you can see this little notch right here on both sides. That's where the line out went that allowed the pressure to go down and into the tank. So that is going to be our outlet side, and looking at the other side of this, that is going to be our air inlet. And the whole way around, you see a bunch of these little circular holes. Every single one of these is a hole that goes through that piece of metal. And on the other side, in the little pie cut piece, you see these three little sticks of metal that go over and cover those. And the three little fingers over the top that you can see here are diaphragm valves. And just for your information, the other five holes on this piece have that exact same type of valve on the other side of the surface. All of these are really just a simple directional valve. It allows air to come in from one side and then not go back the other way. And by lightly pressing the back side of these with a screwdriver, you can actually see these functioning and how they fold up and out of the way. Anytime air gets sucked in or pushed out of this piston, that's really what it's doing, is creating a pressure difference between the two sides, and that air forces those valves open so it can go through. Then as the piston rebuilds, builds the pressure, it's reseating those valves so the air cannot go out the way that it came in, and it has to go out the other side pushing those valves out and then down into the pressure tank. But obviously the whole point of a compressor is that it stores that compressed air so that you can use it. That's why the exhaust side also has these same valves, otherwise that compressed air would push back into the piston and then potentially leak out, which would defeat the entire purpose of having this tool. Anyhow, if you reorient this to how it was installed based on where that exhaust line exit cutout is, 
is, that tells you the valves on that side are all for the exhaust, whereas the other side was all for the air intake. Which means that when you look at the other piece that mates to the surface of it, this little notch in the top and the bottom half that we initially saw from the outside are indeed the only two inlets that are allowing air to come into this pump. At this point, the exhaust side has to function, but you don't really have to care what it looks like because ultimately you are just dumping that air back to the atmosphere. Because what we really need to modify to make this a vacuum pump is the inlet side. So we're going to have to seal up those two channels that are the current air inlets. We want all of our inlet to be controlled through a single line. And the way that I plan to do that is using a barbed fitting that I can put a piece of hose over the top of with a hose clamp, which means that I have to find a spot on the inlet side of this housing that I can thread that into. There's only two obvious contenders for this on the inlet side, and that would be these two flat surfaces at the top and the bottom. However, the one on the bottom probably doesn't make sense to do because that's going to point your hose and your barbed fitting straight down, meaning that it's probably going to be the first thing that strikes the ground every time you put this tool down. Over the long term, that will probably cause some damage, so we're going to skip that option. So knowing that we're going to be drilling into the top of this housing, the next step is to really figure out how much space that we have here. Because you don't only have to fit the diameter of the fitting that you're going to be putting in, you do want a little bit of metal left around it, and you're going to drill a hole that's a little bit larger than your fitting that you're going to be putting the threads into to make it stay. And then on the other half of this, you want to make sure the fitting that you have isn't too long and it's not going to collide with any of the other internal surfaces. And wouldn't you know it, the fitting that just happened to be perfect for this application, both in size and in function, was the fitting on my old vacuum pump from Harbor Freight that was hand operated. Once I've got this big motorized one, I've got a very strong feeling that I will never use that hand one again, so this seemed like a good time to cannibalize my not working tools to make one that actually does work. Having freed the barbed connector, I took out the tap set and I lined up the threads between the taps and the actual fitting, made sure that the threads and the diameter were a match, and that is the tap that we are going to use to add threads to that inlet. But before we can do that, we do have to pre-drill a hole in the spot that we're going to be doing this, and every tap should say what size drill bit you need to pre-drill that hole. And pro tip, if you just want to do a quick sanity check once you do have that drill bit, put the thick end of the drill bit next to the threads of the fitting that you're going to put on. The diameter of the drill bit should be roughly the same, maybe a hair larger than the inner diameter if you were to remove the threads on the fitting. Because if you just happen to screw up and make the hole too large, there is no going back and you have to find a bigger fitting afterwards. As a final sanity check, double check your alignment of where this thing is going to be sitting. You can see I just physically took that barbed fitting, placed it where I thought it would go, figured out how deep it would go past that top metal surface if it was screwed all the way down, and then check the inside of this to make sure there was no castings or edges or anything that this would bump into that would prevent us from doing it. Really take your time with getting that placement right. This is a pretty important step because if you don't do this right, you're probably not going to have a good seal there. Air is just going to get through that air gap and suddenly the hose that you were planning on using as a vacuum pump is not really going to be very effective. But once you have decided on that final placement, you are ready to pre-drill that first hole. And I actually threw this in my vise for a couple reasons. First being that this hole would be a little bit more perpendicular. I could get it straight up and down and that is going to help with its sealing later. And second, if this piece is locked in place, I can be a lot more precise with where I'm drilling that hole, and also I'm not holding it by hand so there's less of a risk of slipping with the drill bit and stabbing myself. And what I actually started with was I believe a 1 8 inch drill bit to make a very small pilot hole to begin with. That way if your placement isn't perfect there is a little bit of an opportunity still to offset it while still covering this entire hole. And after I had that starter hole the entire way through that's when I used the full size drill bit that was recommended on the side of the tap, finally followed by using the tap to chase out those new threads. And with that completed we can now see how badly we screwed up by trying to thread in our barbed fitting. And truth be told, I'm very surprised to say that this went very smooth. The hole I drilled was almost perfectly vertical and I had zero issues threading this thing in. And now we're finally ready to start reassembling this as a vacuum pump. I got a bunch of Q-tips and isopropyl alcohol. I washed out the threads that we just carved as well as a bunch of the surfaces that we're going to be putting sealant on. And I'll be using this Permatex copper gasket maker to seal up those edges and make a new gasket. And the reason for that is because that's just what I happen to have lying around and I'm sure somebody in the comments will tell me how stupid I am for using it. But as you can see here, I pretty much just coated the threads of that barbed fitting before retightening it down. Then I applied a bead of the gasket maker around the entire perimeter, as well as putting a big old glob to fill in those slots on the top and the bottom that were the old air intakes. The other thing you'll probably notice that I did is uninstalling that pressure regulator from the top of the tank. When this is done, I don't want to have to carry around a metal tank every time I want to use this. I only want to carry around what's absolutely necessary, which are the core components here. It was easy enough to unscrew 
unscrew that pressure regulator, which will cut the power to the pump if there's too much pressure. And while that is an important safety feature on the compressor, that is not needed on the vacuum pump, and honestly, I could have just cut that out and then bypassed it with a new power switch. The next problem is I don't want to just have this random assortment of spinning parts sitting on the floor every time I use this. I would like to have it in some sort of a housing. So I'm actually going to try to reuse the black plastic housing that was on the top of the compressor. And the only thing that's really going to require modification for how this was before is making sure that that new barbed fitting we put in doesn't run into anything. So after some quick alignment checks and basic measurements, I figured out roughly where I had to cut a hole in this so that I would have access to that new barbed fitting, as well as how big of a hole that that would need to be for me to comfortably fit my fingers in there to install the hose and or the hose clamp that would eventually be our vacuum line. Just like before, I put this in the vice grip before drilling that initial hole just so I had a little bit more accuracy. And I didn't want to go to the full finished diameter even though this is a fairly large drill bit. So after I made that initial hole, I did a quick dry fit, saw how this lined up and where the hole needed to shift, and then continued to remove material from this plastic housing until I was comfortable with the window size that I had created. And this wasn't necessarily a difficult process, but it was a little time consuming with all of the back and forth to make sure I was happy with that alignment. But now that I was happy with my freshly installed window, I was ready to go ahead and start reassembling this within the plastic housing. I did not do a very good job of documenting how it was in there originally, so it took me a few tries to actually line things up correctly, but once everything was lined up correctly, it went together very easily. I then reinstalled all the screws to keep those two halves of the housing together, and finally, we are now ready to test this vacuum pump. Before I do anything too crazy, I am first just going to make sure that this still runs, because I did mostly pull it apart and then disconnect some stuff. So starting with that real quick. Now this housing is pretty shaky, that's kind of to be expected because normally it's bolted to a massive metal tank, so I would expect a little more vibration without that there to dampen it. But now let's move on to the real test of seeing how much this sucks. For demonstration purposes, I filled this Gatorade bottle with tap water. I also have this catch can in line that's supposed to prevent the liquid from getting all the way to the pump. Though if we do get a little bit of moisture in the pump, it's probably not the end of the world as long as we don't completely flood it. But let's fire this thing up and see how it does. Wow. Yeah, actually a little bit surprised. That is way better than I thought it would work. So there you have it. With a little ingenuity, a $5 fitting, and a $10 bottle of sealant, we've taken this Facebook Marketplace find of a $25 air compressor and changed it into an unreasonably effective vacuum pump that can probably outperform most of the models under $500. So take this as your reminder to go out and try something absolutely ridiculous, splash in a little bit of ingenuity, and save yourself some money on the way. Hopefully this helps you out, and thank you for watching.